And now if you recall, we covered there were three different ways of doing these calculations. One was the formula. And the formula, remember, was we took the doctor's orders divided by the on-hand dose times the vehicle gave you the amount to administer. Now this formula actually could be readjusted to give you the proportion. If you recall from this uh, formula here, both the on-hand dose and the vehicle come off of the label of the medication, whether it's a vial or a, a bottle um, that's from the label of the medication. It's a property of the medication itself. So for our proportion, we start out with the label. And on the label, we usually do the on-hand dose over the vehicle. Then it would be the doctor's orders over the amount administered. So again, this is what we're looking for, is the amount to administer to the patient. Both of those I find a little bit clumsy and confusing. The method that I think is easiest is the dimensional analysis. My color's going crazy there. There we go. And for dimensional analysis, what we are doing is we are simply doing unit conversions, looking at the units we have starting with the doctor's orders and we are progressing to convert it into something we can administer to the patient. So did anybody, is there anybody out there that really latched on to either the formula or the proportion and really loved it? Um, just a show of hands. Okay, good. For some of the simple problems, the formula you know, is pretty straightforward and can be easier, but as we get into the more complex one, dimensional analysis does definitely prove to be simpler. So let's do some examples here just to review quick. So let's say a doctor orders 600 milligrams of antibiotics. And the label on the bottle states it is 150 milligram tablets. So the way that we proceeded with this is we took the doctor's order, the 600 milligrams, and we made it into a fraction. So we put it over one. And then we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor, an equivalency. And the equivalency comes from the label of the bottle. We think of this here, 150 milligrams, 150 milligram tablets as being the equivalency, 150 milligrams equals one tablet. So over here, we're getting rid of milligrams. So we put milligrams on bottom. So tablets will go on top. 150 milligrams equals one tablet. And now the milligrams will cross cancel out. And then we multiply 600 times one tablet is 600 tablets. One times 150 is 150. And that divides out. 600 divided by 150 is four tablets. So we would administer four tablets to that patient. So for another example, let's say the doctor orders 0.5 grams POQ3H. So acetaminophen, of course, is just a, the main ingredient in Tylenol. And so this is probably being administered for pain. The PO means to be administered orally by mouth. And the Q3H means every three hours. So let's say on our label, 125 milligram capsules. Now again, to remind you, the only difference between capsules and tablets 
Um, tablets, I didn't use the word scored here, but scored tablets, we can go down to a half a tablet. A capsule, you can only go to the nearest capsule. Um, if you need to go to a fraction, you have to ask the pharmacist to load the capsules appropriately. So anyway, we would start out with the doctor's order here. 0.5 grams, make it a fraction. Now then we need to convert that. To convert it, we're going to need grams on bottom. However, on our label, we don't have grams, we have milligrams. This is giving us the equivalency of 125 milligrams equals one capsule. So what we have to do is we have to convert our grams to milligrams first. One gram is 1,000 milligrams. So the grams have canceled out. We're now in milligrams. Now we can come back and get rid of milligrams and convert milligrams into capsules. So 125 milligrams equals one capsule. And the milligrams cancel out. It's so now on top. 0 0.5 times 1,000 is 500 times one capsule is 500 capsules. On bottom, 1 times 1 times 125 is 125. And we divide it out. 500 capsules divided by 125 is 4 capsules. So again, the only difference really between tablets and capsules is capsules we have to round to the nearest one. Tablets we can go to the nearest half. Both of these came out to be exact, so we didn't have to worry about it. Okay, so let's say our doctor orders 175 milligrams of drug. Um, label says 500 milligrams per cc. We want to know how many milliliters to administer. So we're looking at a syringe. It is measured in milliliters. So how much to inject into the patient? Well, we have 175 milligrams as our order. Make that a fraction over one. We have to convert away from milligrams in our equivalency here. 50 milligrams per cc again means 50 milligrams equals one cc. So put the milligrams on bottom. CC's on top, so 50 milligrams, 1 cc. But we need this in milliliters. Well, 1 cc equals 1 milliliter. A cubic centimeter, a cc, is equal to a milliliter. So they are the same. So we could have just crossed off cc's and put in ml's for milliliters. So 175 times 1 times 1 milliliter is 175 milliliters. 1 times 50 times 1 is 50, and we have 175 milliliters divided by 50 is 3.5 milliliters. So we would load 3.5 milliliters into the syringe to inject into our patient. Okay, well, next we might have an order... for 15 grams of medication. And on our label, it says 100 milligrams and 15 milliliters. So again, we're gonna start with the doctor's orders, the 15 grams, put it over one. And we need to get rid of the grams, so we're going to put grams on bottom. Well, to get rid of them, we have something to, we need to go to something. Well, we don't have any equivalency for grams. Remember, this is implying 100 milligrams equals 15 milliliters. So we have to get to milligrams first. One gram is 1,000 milligrams. The grams cancel. Now we can go from milligrams to milliliters. 100 milligrams is 15 milliliters. Okay, now at this point, um, 
quite often I will cross cancel a little bit with the zeros. Take off two zeros here and two zeros here. So now this is 15 times 10 times 15, which is 2,250 milliliters on top. One times one times one is just one on bottom. So that is saying we would administer 2,250 milliliters of that medication. This is most likely going to be an IV of some sort. We'll be looking at those later on today. Okay, so um, that's the way that dimensional analysis works. And as we said, it, it's if there's a couple of different levels, like on problems like this one or ones we saw before, it's nice to not have to set up the problem twice and have to do that conversion twice using either the proportion or the dosage calculation formula. All right, so our next step now is we're going to move into... IV flow rates. And IV flow rates are simply going to be a volume of fluid per unit of time. And IV flow rates can be expressed in one of several ways. They can be in milliliters per hour. It can be in milligrams per hour. Now I realize that's a mass and not a volume. Um, it can be in milliliters per minute. Or we can express them. GTT means drops per minute. Depending on the type of equipment you have, you might need different uh, different units. For example, if you're using an old-fashioned stand with just simply uh, using your stopwatch or your wristwatch to time you know, the drops and figure it out, drops per minute is what you would want. You would get it set and you would actually count the drops. Usually you'd count for 15 seconds and multiply by four to figure out your drops per minute and slow it, speed it up or slow it down depending on how you adjust it. If you're using an electronic infuser, Usually milliliters per hour or milliliters per minute is all you need to know and the infuser will do the rest of the work for you. Um, some infusers can be set for drops per minute as well. If we are using an infuser, drops per minute would get rounded to the nearest tenth. So one decimal place. If you are doing this um, doing it manually, then you would round to the nearest drop. So for the sake of this class, we are going to assume that you are not using an infuser, that you're just sitting there with a stand and you're timing it with a stopwatch. So for this class, we're going to be rounding to the nearest drop. So let's start out with just some basic flow rates here. Let's say that we are, oops, don't know where that came from. Let's try that again. So let's say the doctor orders 2,000 milliliters over eight hours. And let's say we are asked to find our flow rate in milliliters per hour. So this is simply going to be creating a rate and then turning it into a unit rate. So our rate here is 2,000 milliliters per eight hours. Now, if you recall, to create a unit rate, all we have to do is divide by the number in the denominator. So the number in the denominator here is 8. So I divide by 8 on both the bottom and top of this. On bottom, 8 hours divided by 8 is 1 hour. On top, 2,000 milliliters divided by 8 is 250 milliliters. So now this is a unit rate, and now we can rewrite it where the fraction gets hidden in the units. 
That is 250 milliliters per hour. We might have order for Eight hundred milligrams to administered over two hours. If we are asked for this in milligrams per hour, it's going to be the same thing. We start out with our rate, which is eight hundred milligrams over two hours. Whenever we're creating a rate, if one of our units is time, the time goes on bottom. Then, of course, we're going to divide it out to be a unit rate. The denominator has a number of 2 in it, so we're going to divide by 2. So 2 hours divided by 2 is 1 hour. 800 divided by 2 is 400 milligrams. So that is 400 milligrams per hour. Now normally those would have another step to it where we would have some equivalency in the label, you know, 25 milligrams and 4 milliliters or whatever. And we would then do that conversion from milligrams to milliliters per hour and work from there. But for now, let's go ahead and let's go back to some more examples with those milliliters. Let's say this time the doctor orders 250 milliliters to be infused over 30 minutes. And I want to know the flow rate here in milliliters per hour still. So we have our rate, 250 milliliters, over 30 minutes. We could convert to a unit rate here, but we don't have the correct units in our denominator. This is minutes on bottom. We want hours in our denominator. So before we do anything, we're going to make that conversion. So we want to get rid of minutes. Minutes are currently on bottom, so we're going to put them on top to get rid of them. And we're converting to hours, so hours are going to go on bottom. One hour is 60 minutes. So the minutes will cancel out. So now I am also going to cross cancel the 30 and the 60. Both of those divide by 30, so I'll get 1 and 2. So 250 times 1 is 500 milliliters. 1 times 1 hour is 1 hour. So 500 milliliters per hour is 500 milliliters per hour. Now that one, a lot of you looked at, could have looked at that and said, okay, 30 minutes. I'm just going to double that to get the rate per hour and that would have worked just fine but we can run into ones like this where our order is for 600 milliliters over 40 minutes and again we want this in milliliters per hour. So again, we write out our rate, 600 milliliters over 40 minutes. And we want to get rid of the minutes and go to hours. So I'll put minutes on top, hours on bottom. One hour is 60 minutes. So now the minutes will cross cancel again. Now, again, I could cross-cancel here. 40 and 60 both divide by 20. So it'll give me 2 and 3. 600 milliliters times 3 is 1,800 milliliters. 2 times 1 hour is 2 hours. And I divide that out. 1,800 divided by 2 is 900 milliliters for 1 hour. So I'm dividing out the 2 to make that a unit rate. So that is the rough, rough calculation to get it to milliliters per hour. Um, if we, like I said, if we're looking at an infuser, 
sometimes that is the number that we can enter into the infuser in order to, to uh, proceed to deliver that medication to the patient. For this class, we are most often going to be considering it to be a, a manual setup where you actually have to set the drips using a valve. So what we're looking at is we're actually calculating this down to milliliters per minute, and then we're going to be looking at drops per minute after that. So let's say our doctor's order is for... Eighteen hundred milliliters to be delivered over six hours. And I want to find the flow rate now in milliliters per minute. So now we're going to be doing our conversions the other way. We start out with a rate, and that rate is still eighteen hundred milliliters over the six hours. But now we don't want our unit of time to be hours anymore. We want it to be minutes. So we're going to convert that. Hours are on bottom, so we're going to put them on top so that they will cancel. Going into minutes, now it's one hour is 60 minutes. So the hours divide out. And now we can, we can cross-cancel the numbers here if we want to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just multiply this out. 1,800 milliliters times 1 is 1,800 milliliters. On bottom, 6 times 60 minutes is 360 minutes. And now I have to get this. I have the right units. It's milliliters per minute. That's what I want for my answer is milliliters over minutes. So I just have to make this a unit rate by dividing out the 360. So 360 minutes divided by 360 is just 1 minute. 1800 divided by 360 should be 5, but I'm going to double check myself. And it is 5. So that is 5 milliliters. So 5 milliliters over 1 minute is 5 milliliters per minute. We can have examples where the doctor might order. So 700 milliliters to be delivered over 20 minutes. Again, find our flow rate in milliliters per minute. So once again, we are going to express our rate. We're given 700 milliliters over 20 minutes. So again, we're following that same pattern of dimensional analysis where we're starting with the orders and we're converting from there. Now we have the correct units. We want milliliters over minutes. We have milliliters over minutes. So we don't need to change our units. All we need to do is turn this into a unit rate. And to do that, we're going to divide by the denominator again. There's 20 minutes, or so divide by 20. That's one minute. On top, we also divide by 20. 700 divided by 20 is 35 milliliters. So 35 milliliters in one minute is 35 milliliters per minute. Let's go back to that example we had where we had milligrams. Let's say the doctor orders... 5,000 milligrams to be administered over four hours. We want to know what our flow rate's going to be in milliliters per minute. So we're going to have several levels of conversion to go through here. Um, first thing we got to do is we got to look at the label. So on the label of the medication, it tells us there's 125 milligrams in 4 milliliters of solution. So again, that's an equivalency telling us 125 milligrams is equal to 4 milliliters. So we're going to start out with the doctor's order again, creating a rate off of the doctor's orders, which is 5,000 milligrams over four hours.
You'll notice this, the, the only real difference here between this and the dimensional analysis we're doing at the beginning of the class here was that these are automatically in a fraction because they're rates. So now we need to get rid of milligrams and we need to get rid of hours. It really does not matter which one we do first. So let's get rid of the hours. So hours are going to go on top so they cancel. So we're changing the minutes. One hour is 60 minutes. So the hours cross cancel. So on bottom we have minutes and that's what we want on bottom. But on top we need to get to milliliters. So we have to get rid of our milligrams on top somehow. So the milligrams are on top. We're going to put it on bottom to get rid of it. We have this relationship, 125 milligrams equals 4 milliliters. And now the milligrams will cancel. And we do have milliliters on top and minutes on bottom, and that's what we want, milliliters over minute. We could cross cancel here if we want to. Um, looking at this, I'm going to at least just cross off a zero here, there and there. So that's 500, and that's just a 6 now. So let's multiply this out then. 500 times 1 times 4 is 2,000 milliliters. 4 times 6 is 24 times 125 is 3,000 3, minutes. And now we have to divide out to make that a unit rate. Dividing by 3,000, that is 0.67 milliliters per minute. Now you might be looking at a thing that's awful small, um, but you got to remember uh, a few milliliters per minute is often what is, what is required for some of the stronger medications in order to keep the patient in there. Uh, if you're, Keep the patient medicated. If you're looking at, you know, a 12 or a 15 drop factor, um, that's still going to work out to 10 drops or so a minute. Okay, let's do another example here. Let's say that the doctor orders this time 50 milligrams. Let's do this. 500 milligrams over 10 minutes. Our label is saying 25 milligrams in 2 milliliters. And we want to know our flow rate again in milliliters per minute. So again, we start out with our doctor's order as a rate. 500 milligrams over 10 minutes. Now we don't need to change the minutes this time. We, have, we want minutes on bottom, so we're going to keep the minutes on bottom. All we need to change are the milligrams. So milligrams are on top. We put them on bottom so they cancel. 25 milligrams in 2 milliliters. So it implies that, that is equal to 2 milliliters. So now we can go ahead and cross cancel the milligram. I would go ahead and, now let's just go ahead and multiply this out. Five, 500 times 2 milliliters is 1,000 milliliters. 10 minutes times 25 is 250 minutes. And we divide by our denominator of 250 to get a unit rate. So that's 4 milliliters in 1 minute, or 4 milliliters per minute. Okay, we're going to have you guys try one here. So let's say our doctor orders here 600 milligrams over four hours. As we look at the label, this is saying... 
Find for me the milliliters per minute flow rate for this. So why don't you go ahead in your notes, figure that out. I'll give you a minute or so, and then we'll take a look at it. So as we look at this one, let's see how you did. We have the rate, the ordered rate of 600 milligrams over four hours. We need to change both of them. The milligrams are going to have to become milliliters. The hours are going to have to become minutes. It doesn't matter which one we change first. I'm going to go ahead and change the hours. Hours are on bottom, so I'm going to put them on top so they cancel. So minutes on bottom. One hour equals 60 minutes. So the minute the hours are now canceled out. We have minutes on bottom, which is what we want. So now we need to get rid of the milligrams. So they're on top, so we're going to put them on bottom to get rid of them. We have equivalency of 15 milligrams per milliliter. That implies 15 milligrams equals one milliliter. So the milligrams cancel out. We now do have milliliters on top and minutes on bottom, which is what we want. Now here, I would most likely cross cancel. But let's go ahead and just multiply it out. 600 times 1 times 1 milliliter is 600 milliliters. 4 times 60 minutes times 15 is 3,600 minutes so that comes out to be one sixth of a milliliter per minute so point one six six seven milliliters per minute so let's throw the next step in there a drop factor A drop factor describes the thickness or viscosity of the fluid. And what it's telling us is it tells us the number of drops of that fluid it takes to equal one milliliter. So a really thin fluid like uh, rubbing alcohol or or, or such, that could be 20 or 25 drops per milliliter. A thicker fluid like a glycerin or a plasma might be 8 or 10 drops per milliliter. And most of our older IV setups are measured in drops. You need to know the drop factor so that you know how to time your drops to set up in that IV. So let's take a look. Let's say we have doctor orders. Ten thousand milliliters be administered over eight hours. On the label, it states that our drop factor is a twelve drops per milliliter. Now it may just say that the drop factor is twelve. That, whenever you see a drop factor, it implies the units are drops per milliliter. 
So we're going to start out with our orders. 10,000 milliliters over eight hours. I should state, by the way, that we are looking for an answer here now in drops per minute. So right now we have milliliters per hour, so we have to get rid of both of them. I'm going to get rid of the hours first. Change it to minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes. So that'll cancel out our hour. And now we have minutes on bottom, which is what we want on bottom. So we need to get rid of the milliliters and convert them to drops. So we'll put milliliters on bottle, so they'll, bottom so they'll cancel out. Drops are going to go on top. 12 drops per milliliter implies 12 drops equals 1 milliliter. And the milliliters cancel. So 10,000 times 1 times 12 is 12,000 drops. Over 8 times 60 minutes is 480 minutes. Now to make that into a unit rate, we must divide out the 480. So 480 minutes divided by 480 is 1 minute. 12,000 divided by 480 is 25 drops. So that is 25 drops per minute. Well, we can go one more step with these. Actually, there's a couple more steps that we'll go as we get through more examples, but for right now, we'll go one more step. So let's say our doctor orders. Twelve thousand milligrams of medication over four hours. On the label, it tells us that there is twenty-five milligrams in eight milliliters, and there is a drop factor of fifteen. Drops per milliliter. So again, we always start with the doctor's order. We turn that into a rate. 12,000 milligrams over four hours. We are looking for our answer in drops per minute. So I have to get rid of both the, the milligrams and the hours. So I'm going to get rid of the hours first. Of course, one hour is 60 minutes. So the hours are gone. We now have minutes on bottom, which is what we want. Next, we have to get rid of milligrams on top. So I'll put milligrams on bottom here. And we have the relationship 25 milligrams in 8 milliliters. So the milligrams cancel out, and we now have milliliters over minutes, but we want drops over minutes. So I need to get rid of the milliliters. I will use the drop factor for that. Convert from milliliters to drops. 15 drops per milliliter means 15 drops in one milliliter. So the milliliters are now gone. And we will have drops over milliliters. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. 12,000 times 1 times 8 times 15 drops is 1,440,000 drops. 4 times 60 minutes times 25 times 1 is 6,000 minutes. So we need to divide that out. Now before I punch this in the calculator, I'm going to make this a little easier on myself. I'm going to cross three zeros out. So this is 1,440 divided by 6, which is 240 drops per minute. Okay. It's closing in on that time, so let me give you guys some homework to work on here. Um, homework that deals with this stuff. Page 172 and 173 in the book. 
one through nine the odds. Just kind of review us on the dosage calculation and constituting a, a solution if you have a vial full of dried powder and you have to add the water to it. And then finding the dosage from there. And then page 178 through 179, 1 through 21 the odd, that is dealing with the IV flow rates. We will start out on Wednesday doing more with IV flow rates. We'll get in uh, units of medication and we'll work more with those drop factors. And then we'll move on to then dosages based on weight, dosages based on body surface area, um, safe doses, and then titrations over the next couple of days. Um, we're looking at our unit tests next week, either Wednesday or Friday of next week. Okay, you guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.